We're following breaking news. A resident of Los Angeles County has contracted the measles virus. This is the first case. The public health department says this person arrived at LAX's Tom Bradley terminal on a Turkish Airlines flight one week ago from today. Well, later that evening, the measles patient went to the Chick-fil-A on Devonshire in Northridge from 8 to 10.30 to be very specific. With more, we are joined by our medical roundup for our medical roundup by board certified ER Dr. Michael Daniel. Good to see you. Good evening. Uh, this news came across from LA County Public Health this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Who is at m most risk for contracting measles virus because it's highly contagious? Right, it's very contagious, much more contagious than COVID or flu, but the majority, the vast majority of people have gotten their two measles, mumps, rubella shots when they were one years old and then at four or six years old. So for the majority of people, they're not at risk. The people that are at risk are those that have never been vaccinated and have never had measles. And so if you were one of the people that came in contact with this person, either in LAX ter uh, International Terminal mm -hmm. or at the Chick-fil-A, I mean, you need to watch your symptoms for the next 21 days. Okay. And those symptoms are fever, cough, runny nose, uh, red, watery eyes, and then a telltale rash throughout the whole body and then little white spots in the inside of the mouth. But if you can monitor your symptoms for 21 days, you're good after that. You're kind of in the clear. Okay. And I mean, most at risk also beyond, obviously, if you don't have the vaccination, are older adults and mm -hmm. younger kids. Correct. Right? So yeah. immune compromised people, yeah. especially if you're not sure if you still have protection, there's a simple blood test you can do to check your titers that your primary care doctor can do. Okay. And if you were on that flight, by the way, uh, local health departments will contact you to alert you. Correct. Okay. Now we're going to talk about the craze that is the Stanley Cup. Uh, this is uh, wild that these are flying off the shelves. Mm -hmm. 40 ounces. There are concerns that people are overhydrating. Uh, hydration is a good thing. Uh, what does that look like in terms of overhydration? Well, I think that, you know, the popularity with the, with the Stanley Cup is because the, the 40 ounce, I mean, if you drink just over more than this, that'll get you to where you need to be for the, during the day. But as I always tell patients, I mean, there's no one size fits all answer as far as hydration. A good rule of thumb is to monitor your urine output. If your urine is running clear, mm -hmm. um, doesn't have a bad odor, then you're keeping up with your hydration during the day. If your urine is coming out like water, that tells you that you are adequately hydrated. And it might be very different for a variety of people depending on how much they exercise and things like that. Overhydration, what does that look like in terms of symptoms? I, I would imagine... I mean, you just go to, you're just going to go to the bathroom a lot. I mean, there's no danger to that there's unless, no I mean, if you're really drinking a lot of water for days on end, you can drop your sodium level um, or actually increase your sodium level. Um, that could be more dangerous, but that's that's rare for most okay. people. Okay, so on average, I mean, we always hear that eight <clears throat> glasses of water a day, mm -hmm. which is 64 ounces, this is 40, so basically one and a half is what the average person. Right, there's I think no that's one a good rule of thumb. All. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, and then there's concerns, if you have a Stanley Cup, that they contain some amount of lead on the bottom? Right. So this was raised by some uh, lead um, toxicity social media advocates. And so the Stanley Cup on the bottom here, there's a lead pellet that is surrounded by stainless steel. Inside. On the bottom. Okay. And that is what it enables it to have the vacuum seal for the insulation. That's their proprietary technology. A lot of tumblers use that same one, but the thing is for that stainless steel to corrode down to that level where you would be exposed to lead is very unlikely. Um, the, the risk is basically nil, okay, but good. I think the concern is, you know, lead toxicity is such a lightning rod right. and why would you make products with lead in the first place? And so it's good to hear that the company is looking for alternative technologies to replace that lead pellet on the bottom. Okay. Well, good information as always. By the way, uh, this is our boss's uh, Stanley Cup. So, Bobby, thank you for yeah, letting us you. use this. <laughs> you are okay. You are safe from lead. <laughs> right. You know. Okay, Dr. D, thank you so much. Thank you. All right.